Hi, in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play Shady Grove on this C scale five string banjo tuned to C sawmill. It's kind of a C sus4 tuning, modal tuning, it's neither major nor minor and it's rather fun to do and of course you can do the same thing on a G banjo, a longer scale banjo, just tune your second string uh, up a half a step or a semitone so you've got a G sus4 tuning. I'm not pretending to be a banjo teacher or some whiz on the banjo. I'm just a guy that plays the banjo. I have done for about 11 years. I'm not particularly brilliant at it, but I thought that I might be able to help uh, some beginners with this tutorial, so I, I hope very much you enjoy it. This banjo is obviously a short scale banjo and it's tuned to C. So if you've got a, a normal G five string banjo, you'll just have to remember that what you're gonna play is gonna be that much lower. Now this is in what we call sawmill tuning. So what we have is G, F, C, G and C. Now your normal C major would be uh, G and this would be E instead of F and then C, G, C. So we've got a kind of uh, C sus4 tuning here which means that it's modal, it's neither major or minor, so it's neither C major nor C minor, it's a specific type of tuning, and like I say, it's called sawmill. So basically it's your normal five string tuning, major chord tuning, but the second string is tuned up a half step or a semitone. So here we are then, here's our first bar, it's actually a pickup bar, and you come in on beat four. And in case you're wondering what software this is, it's called Table Edit, and it's very good. It's a little bit quirky, but I've been using it quite a few years and it works pretty well, I think. You start off with string number four open and then you hammer up to the third fret of it. Now you'll notice it's second finger. Now our position is moved up all the way through in this tune. So our first finger is used behind the second fret, second finger is used behind the third fret and so on and so forth. So when we play this first note, this third fret of string number four, it's second finger. And that's what this two in the circle means here. This I underneath this open G string means you're going to play that string with your index finger. Now this style is claw hammer, okay, or frailing banjo, some people call it. But you just use the fingernail of your index finger. It's a bit hard to show you this, but like that, pushing down. 
And once you've played that string open, you're going to hammer your second finger of your left hand down onto the, or behind the third fret of that same string. So it's one, two, three, four, and, and that's your first part of the tune done. Then you can see a repeat sign, so we're going to come back to this, and a, a senyo, again a repeat sign. And don't worry about these funny little blue squares, uh, that's something peculiar to the software. You don't see this when you print it out. So we've got an open uh, C string, open third string. Now again, you're going to play that with your index finger. So basically, you're going to play most of the strings with your index finger with this pushing down technique. Uh, and when you play string number five, you'll be using your thumb. So I for index, T for thumb. And I, I probably won't mention that again because it's the same all the way through. So there's your first part. So it's one, two, three, four, and one. Now I'm assuming that you know how to read tablature, but just in case you don't, the O means open, the three means third fret, and so forth, of whatever string that those numbers are on. Okay, so as you look down the strings here, it looks a bit like a stave, doesn't it? Because you've got five lines just like a stave, but it's not a musical stave. Uh, this line at the bottom represents the shortest, in this case, C string, this one here, that ends at this peg here. So this looks like normal music, doesn't it? Because you've got a single stem for the crotchet, you've got two stems with a beam for the quavers, so that's where we borrow from musical notation. So in this first complete bar, we've done this open uh, C string, open third string, and then it says three SL5 on the fourth string. SL stands for slur or slide, so your second finger, see the two in the circle, goes behind that third fret of that string four, and you play the string with your index finger, and you slide that finger quickly up to behind the fifth fret, like this. Yeah, so, so far. Now, don't worry too much if you hit more than one string or hit more than the string you're supposed to hit because this is a droning instrument. So if you if you play more strings than is written down on the tablature, it won't be the end of the world because everything sounds good, basically. I've kind of dumbed this down a bit so it's not too difficult to play. In that first complete bar, so far I've got this. So in fact, having slurred up to behind that fifth fret, we've got the same note that we're playing on the open third string. And then we come back to that third string, open, and then again open, and then for the first time we play the highest pitched string, string number five, with T with our thumb. And the way we do that is like that. We simply pluck it downwards and come away. So far we've got this. So four and one, two and three, four and four and one, two and three, four and okay, and it all kind of rings together and sounds great. So in this next bar, we've got second fret of string number three, first finger, P means pull off, down to open. So our first finger is uh, here on the third string, see, on the C string going to pluck it with your index finger and you're going to do this. So once you plucked it with the index finger of the right hand, you literally pluck it with that index finger that's on the string. That's what a pull off is. So we play the string once, but we get two notes. And then we play the open string again. Okay, and then we play our high pitch string with our thumb. So. And then we've got third fret of the fourth string, again with the second finger, again plucked with the index finger. And to finish the bar, we've got two open strings, open third string, open fifth string, index finger thumb. So this second complete bar sounds like this. Let's put it together, what we've got so far. Hopefully you can hear how it all rings together really nicely. So just to recap, the I means index finger of the right hand, the T means thumb of the right hand, these numbers in circles, two in the circle means second finger left hand, one in the circle means uh, first finger of the left hand, 
H stands for hammer on. Uh, SL stands for slur, P stands for pull off. Let's do that again. Now I've actually reverted to a PDF of this because it's confusing having that other music because it doesn't show the bar lines properly. So bar number four is down here. This first little bar that only had two notes in the hammer on, that's a pick up bar. So this is bar one, bar two, and this is bar three. Now we're about to do bar three, so the last bar of this first line. Now it's lots of open strings, open third string twice, and then your thumb plays that open top string. Then you have the hammer on, open to second on that third string, and then open uh, F string as it is here, index finger, and then back to that top string. So you can hear that note coming in for the first time. Let's recap. And the whole thing's got to be nice and relaxed, nice and wristy. And like I say, if you overhit, if you hit more than one string, don't worry too much about it. It's a very relaxed style, isn't it? Let's look at our next line here. This is bar four. First time we've had a bar marked. First finger is behind the second fret of the F string, the second string, so it's here. Okay, a bit hard to show you on this. And you can see here you're going to have a crotchet two quavers, crotchet two quavers, one, two, and three, four, and. And that thumb plays that open high pitch string on the and counter two and the and counter four. So, so far, counting wise, we've had four and one, two, and three. Four and one and two and three, four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three, four and. So let's play those four bars with that pickup bar glued on the front. It's quite subtle, isn't it? Now let's look at bar five, second bar on this second line. We've got a hammer on open to the third fret of this string G. It's the string nearest the floor. And second finger is going to do that. So we pluck the string with our index finger like we do all the while, apart from when we play string five. And we hammer out second finger down behind that third fret. Play that string again. And then come up, play the open five. And then play the open string one, the G string, and then again, and then string five. So one and two and three, four and. So it's two quavers, two quavers, crotchet, two quavers. Now, third bar of this line, which is bar six, we've got one, two and three, four and. We've got open F string, open second string, that pull off again from two to O on string three on the C string, then over to the third fret of string four, and then open third string, open fifth string. Then you've got bar seven, last bar of this line here. It's the hammer on again. I'm sure you're getting the idea by now. And open to the second fret of string three, open second string, open uh, fifth string and then a pull off from the second fret of uh, the second string to the open uh, second string. First finger is behind the second fret of the F string. You play the F string with your index finger and pull off to open and then bring your first finger over to the second fret of the third string, the C string and you end the bar with the open fifth string. One and two and three and four and. Right, let's play from the beginning down to that point. And I'm not pretending that I'm some banjo wizard. I'm not. I just 
a person who plays banjo and I thought you might find this interesting but it's it's fun to do and the trick is to bring out the tune tune coming out and the rest is buried so you've got to learn to feel the accents of the beat and the notes and the rhythm and the tune you know not everything is played at the same level that's what I'm trying to say let's scroll down to bar eight now this very simple one two and three four and I'm not going to talk about every single note now I'm sure you're getting the idea watch out for that hammer on at the end of that bar eight so one, two, and three, four, and, and then you've got the same as you've already played. Now the difference this time, in bar 12, when you played this earlier, you played, here we're gonna go, we're gonna start with a hammer on from open to the second fret of string two. Now notice here, when I do this, how I leave my first finger down. So that's all the same as before. Bar 15, a little bit different. Now here I put a little hammer on and pull off at the end on that last beat as a triplet. So the first finger is behind the second fret of that third string. You play the third string, hammer on your second finger to the third fret and pull off back to the second fret. Leave your first finger still. Bar 16 is kind of the start of the next bit. As you go to that open string one. So the whole bar is open strings. Right, I'm going to use my uh, printed copy now to play those first 16 bars. the strings ringing there when I played that open first string I, I clipped the second string it doesn't matter the first bar of the next section is is down here bar 16 it's actually the last bar on this page and you have this now you can see that you're wandering up the string number one you open second third open so you have open second So first finger behind the second fret, second finger behind the third fret. Remember, you're in that second position, and it's all index finger thumb, index finger thumb, index finger thumb, index finger thumb. So from the previous bar, don't get to push. It's not you don't pluck the string like that. You literally push down on it like that. So it's. Fingers at that angle and push down. So you're not plucking with your finger now, you're pushing down with the face of the nail. Let's get into the next bet. Now you're coming up to the fifth fret with the first finger and the seventh fret with the third finger back to the fifth fret. So you do this. Now I've dumbed this down a bit. There is a harder version of this, but I've made this a bit easier for you. So notice everything you play is echoed with the open high pitch string. Fifth fret is first finger, seventh fret is third finger. So going into this, and then you do bar 19 is the same as bar 17. And this time at the end of this line, uh, bar 20, you just do this. One, two, and three, four, and just scroll down a little bit so you can see the fingering. It's always index finger and thumb, isn't it? By the way, a lot of people use their second finger instead of their first finger. So if you feel more comfortable, use your second finger instead of your first. So, five, five, oh, five, five, oh, one, two, and three, four, and. Uh, 
Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now, the next bit is the first time we're going to do some uh, double thumbing, which is a little bit harder. So bar 21. Sounds like that. Now, it's seventh fret, third finger. One, two, and. So you play that note twice. And then you have the open high pitch string. Then you make a little chord shape. Third fret, string one. Fourth fret, string two. And you do this. This is called double thumbing, where the thumb plays string five and then it plays another string, in this case, string two. So you have here on this third and fourth beat of the bar, you play the string one with your index finger, string two with your thumb. Notice here, it's the thumb. Okay. And then back to string one with your index finger. And then the thumb moves back to string five. So the thumb is going string five, string two, string five. Like that. That's probably the hardest part of the tune. Bar 22. More double thumbing. Got open first string and then open second string. Index and thumb. Like that. And then the first finger comes over to the second fret of string three. Play that string three with your index finger. Pull off. Over to the third fret of string four. Index finger plucks that string. Now I put finger one down behind the second fret of the third string and finger three down behind the third fret of the first string. And with my index finger, I just strum those three strings, the third, the second, and the first, followed quickly by the open top string, open high pitched string. So there's two bars, 21 and 22. Like that. And then bar 23 at the end of the line there. You've got hammer on here. And then pull off here and the first finger you'll notice moves from the third string to the second string and back again like that. and then carrying on with ending number one and this is going to take you back to here the last bar of page one so you come through again okay all the way through and this time I want you to do ending two instead number one so you'll do bar 22 this one here and you'll jump to uh, 25 what you've got there of course is that hammer on and pull off again and that hammer on at the end of bar 26 is what you had right at the beginning of the piece and that's going to take you back to see the repeat sign all the way back to the sign not the pickup bar but the first complete bar come through again and when you want to finish the tune, you'll do ending three. So you'll jump from the end of 22 straight down to 27. So you'll do this from 21. And just end with that open third string there. Now I've got another version of this, which is quite fun, which I call the syncopated version. So let's get a look at that, shall we? Now it's only the first bit that's different. And I'll show you what happens. Now, so what is syncopation? It's putting an accent on the weak part of the bar. So we start in the normal way. But then, when we get to this last note of bar two, this open third string, we hit that hard and we wait and the first half of the next bar it was actually tied okay this note you can't see it because the tablet you won't let me do that but it's still ringing on the next note you're going to play is this open high pitched fifth string off the beat so from bar uh, two can you hear that to so come in off the beat uh, in bar three with this open high pitched uh, C string. Have a listen out for that again. So that's rather 
nice, isn't it? So instead of the sort of dead straight version, you've got this kind of funky offbeat version. <laughs> Now in a similar way, in bar five going into bar six, this last note of bar five, this open second string, you play it, you wait, you tie it, although you can't see the tie it, there's nothing here you see, and on the off beat of beat one, on the end count, you play this open high pitched C string, this open fifth string, and carry on with your pull off. Carry on in the normal way, and then the same thing happens down here. And that's the only thing that's different between the two versions, the rest of it, the... That's exactly the same. Notice that the right hand position here, the thumb along the length of that uh, top string, not like this, but... So it literally pings off when you play. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson, you got something out of it. Um, obviously there are some really good banjo teachers online. Uh, some are free, some are paid for, and uh, you'll have to decide what's, what's good for you. But anyway, I hope you managed to glean something from this lesson. Thank you very much for watching, and you'll see me in my next video.